This is smithy.tv. Kaylee's rolling. All right. Sue, we are in the studio Damn. for the first time in 2014. Yeah. 2014. I was right when I said it. One year before the hoverboards. Before the what? Harbor oh, boards. man. Mattel has future. one year to make the <laughs> hoverboard for me. <laughs> it's true. It doesn't but have to be Mattel. It doesn't have are to be. Are they even still in business? Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're kind of excited. We've, we've had a couple weeks where we've been kind of sitting on the fact that we've just got this interview and we've just mm -hmm. been kind of giggling like sad little goofy children <laughs> because we are in the studio with the very cool and I can Canada's say that. Canada's darling. <laughs> wow. The amazing Leslie Hope. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for coming in. Do you call everybody Canada's darling? No, I just came up with that. <laughs> I've never heard her say that before, ever. <laughs> Not even to Katie Bowen. Not even to Katie Bowen. I was going to say, she might be Canada's sweetheart. She yes, is. yes. She really is. There we go. But yes, Leslie, thank you for finding the time. Well, because, thank you for having me. I mean, me. you are a busy, busy lady. <laughs> <laughs> You don't stop. In, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> what do you got you in there? What's it tell you? We hit your IMDb page today, so uh, we like to be uh -huh. ready and prepared. And I'm also 110, so it's like, what, 50 pages thick, right? Yes. Please. <laughs> 110. Like <laughs> <And> the Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> but we did ask if you've seen any of our shows and you watched Gail and Katie, I which did. is a great episode to watch, because Gail's yeah. amazing. She is amazing. Katie's like a, an actual co-host at this point, because she's been on four times. <laughs> But, uh, so you know what we like to do, we know how, you like, how we like to chat, and just mm -hmm. kind of relax. So we always like to know, what's your favorite movie? Oh, it's my favorite movie. Yeah. Okay, well, I have... Or one of. I have... Can, do, can I have a few more than one? Yes, sure. I mean, as many as you like. Um, in no particular order. <laughs> um, I love Under the Volcano, a movie mm -hmm. that Houston made a long time ago with uh, Jacqueline Bissett. Mm. Is that right? Did I name her right? Yes. Right? Under the Volcano, <laughs> Malcolm Lowry. Just like beautiful, yeah. beautiful movie. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, I have to say Superbad's one of my all-time favorite movies that's <laughs> ever made. That's awesome. And I have, right? <laughs> um, and I have the, I don't know, dubious distinction of seeing that movie twice with my teenage son. Wow. Which is a whole different kind of awkward. Right? Well, first for me <laughs> and then for him. Um, what other movies? Uh, 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 I love The Matrix yeah. uh, with all my heart. And um, then sw swooping back the other way, I would say Cassavetes, Woman Under the Influence, wow. one of my all time oh, favorites. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, see. Lots of different movies. Yeah, and I'm sure good. there's loads more. And that's good. Yeah. We had at least one guest who randomly throughout the interview would like, yeah, throw just, out another movie title. How about this? Title, like, I'm oh, changing oh, yeah, it to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to steal that. <laughs> now, I love the fact that uh, you were born out east in yeah. Halifax, mm -hmm. where I did my university. Thank you very much. And then... You can tell by the way you said out east. Thank <laughs> you. I was born in New Brunswick. That counts. <laughs> and then you kind of, when you went to university, you literally went to the other coast. You well, actually, uh, truth be told, I didn't actually go to university. I went to uh, uh, St. Michael's University School, which oh. is a university prep school. And I have another dubious distinction. I didn't actually graduate. <laughs> 
I am technically I have a, a couple high school dropout. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get this straight. So, so I went to year. university's prep school. I didn't even prep school. Did and I didn't even get out of the prep. Nor did you go to? No, neither. My parents were super proud. Um, <laughs> I went to a university prep school when my father was in the military and he was transferred oh, overseas. Yeah. So I was left in Victoria while they went off to what? Italy and then Ottawa. Which, no offense to Ottawa, no. but that was sort of my, <laughs> yeah. maybe I'll stay. Um, <laughs> I'll visit Italy in the summer, and I won't go to Ottawa. And I, uh, I was fortunate enough that Paul Allman directed a movie mm -hmm. that ended up using my school as a location. That's right. And they cast kids that. from the yeah. school, so at the ripe age of 16, I was doing this movie mm -hmm. in my boarding school. And that was it. I was sort of cooked. There was like no yeah, way I was going to further than that, yeah. At least you got something out of your education. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, did not I learned know. how to write a letter. I had a, an excellent Jeez. teacher to this day who I, I like so much named David Penaluna, and he was my English teacher. And uh, he sort of kept me in line and, and taught me a little bit about writing. The English teachers do. Yeah. yeah. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I probably look fondly back on my English teachers the most. Yeah. There's yeah. always one. It's yeah, awesome. there's one, yeah. right? <laughs> Some others, not so much. Yeah. They'll go nameless, but he was great. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I love the fact, though, that your dad was in the service. Yeah. My dad was, too. So oh, he was? Did you get to go to, like, any cool postings? Postings, where was your favorite place? Well, um, the, uh, our trajectory was, uh, I was born in Halifax. I said that I had this right. We went to Surreal, Quebec, don't remember. Went to Victoria, British Columbia when I was little. Back to Kingston, Ontario. Toronto. Did you do all this circuit too? I did, I, we never got out to BC, but, yeah, we did the Kingston, yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Kingston, Toronto, and then back to Halifax. Back to Victoria, and then my dad went. My family, you know, my dad and my brother. Yeah. My mom went to um, uh, Italy, Ottawa. I forgot Brussels was in there somewhere. We Brussels, did Brussels, you yeah. did Brussels, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, Norfolk in Virginia. Oh wow! And then they ret retired. My my mother's no longer around, but they retired back to Halifax. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Italy was pretty cool. Italy Brussels was cool. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Tell me where you went to high school. I went to high school in Bermuda. You did? Oh, man. <laughs> How did you do that? What, 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 what was your dad? What, 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 what? Uh, he was just, uh, and this is going to sound so mean Army, to my dad, Navy. but he was Air Force. He was Air just Force. a clerk, right? So, but yeah, we got there. We did <laughs> two years, and then right. they made the argument that we really don't want to make Tim change his high school in the middle of high school. They did that to me, too, when I was in Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> you have work change. out. Yeah. Yeah, but that's awesome though. Italy would have been just even just to see. It was. It was great. I was 16 when I went to visit them that summer. It was pretty great. And then acting mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And let's get it out of the way because Sue has been talking about it for like day one. Terry Bauer. <laughs> what what t-shirt do you have on Sue? By uh, if you don't yeah. watch 24, you don't know Jack. Uh, I see. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Which is w one of the reasons that completely blew our mind that. We could get you in the studio because you know Terry Bauer, and then of course you played a president in your time. You've also played what the Secretary of the Navy. Secretary of the Navy. Yeah, yeah doing that right um, now. Yeah. And of course now you're not. Determined wife in the river. Yeah. Yes. Oh. With other fellow that Canadians with out. Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce. Yeah. Love Bruce Greenwood. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah I Twenty four was like a little <laughs> Canadian family too. Yes, it was. It was. You and Kiefer and Mia and Alicia. And Alicia. And Mia, yes. Right. And our a DP Rodney was Canadian. Yeah. John Cassar came down was Canadian. Alberta Watson did it. Wendy Cruson did it. Those guys, you know, they'd shot up here. Um, Nikita in Toronto. Oh, that's right. And so they knew a lot of the the yeah. players up here, and they were very great about bringing. Some people were already there, but bringing some people down too. That's awesome. It was cool because they had that. Um, there is an accidental fan phone where I think it was some like a prop guy or something. Somebody's phone number got accidentally put on the screen, <laughs> and twenty four fans were paying attention, so we all started calling it, and it was just some guy's cell phone, but. Um, so they mean. decided to use it as a fan phone, and uh, every once in a while they'd so put great. the number on the screen. We could call in, and uh, if they were shooting or whatever, like whoever would pick it up. And I got to talk to like a script girl, Annie something, I think. Uh -huh. And then I think John Cassar was directing, so I got to hear him yell action. Oh, that's <laughs> And they were like, You didn't hear anything, did you? And I'm like, No. no. It was so awesome, you're a though. true fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my thing was, as I was saying to Tim, like, I had two crushes after that first episode one was on Terry Bauer, one was on Nina Myers. And well, you know, we were off the season. I was yeah, like, yeah, are you really? kidding me? Yeah. I lost them both. Yeah. 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 She, she came back. She came back, but yeah. She wasn't awesome. <laughs> she was <laughs> mean. 
<laughs> she, was, she was pretty awesome in her meanness, though. Yeah, she, I did like watching her be mean. Yeah. I also like watching Jack shoot her. <laughs> After a while. Uh-huh. Now, just out of just just plain yeah. curiosity now, because after you were done on the series, did you go back? Do you did you watch the rest of the series, or were you like, I'm well, dead? What's the point? <laughs> um, not exactly, but I didn't watch the rest. Of, I, I don't have a television, so Nothing I'm a bad person. Um, I mean, and so I'd go to my friend's house to watch it on TV when it was happening. That's I mean, right. I have a like a screen yeah. and a DVD player. I don't yeah, live no, in a I'm cave, you know. But, um, at the time, no. So and. Um, I can't say that it wasn't that I, I, in fact, I didn't even see the last episode until I came up here. Rob Salem, who uh, wrote for The Star, was doing a class, and he asked me to come speak at the class, cool. and they wanted to talk about the last episode, and I hadn't seen it. Oh. The night that it aired, actually, I was out having dinner with Kiefer. I was like, I don't know if I want to watch this. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I hadn't seen it until years later. Wow. Um, yeah. But... I've heard that, I was devastated. <laughs> yeah, that the show is pretty good. Yeah. And um, I've heard right. that, um, that, that it went on. I mean, I did go to, I didn't actually understand the impact of that show truly until it was over and they had one of those, hey, it's the end of the, the, all these seasons and we're going to have a celebratory goodbye to 24 right. party. And I thought, oh, it would be nice to you know, see some of the actors and some <laughs> of the crew and stuff. And I thought, well, I'm going to go if I can find, like, a clean shirt and whatever that day was. I didn't understand, like, it was kind of a big deal. And as I was sort of pulling up in my crap car, you know, like, oh, no, it's, like, press and hundreds and hundreds of people. And it was international, like, red carpet with people from all over the world, like, all 24 freakers. And then you go inside, and there are these huge screens playing everywhere with all the clips from the wow. different seasons. And oh my Lord. that's when I sort of really, oh, right, that was a deal, that on. show. Yeah. yeah, people were really into it, yeah. Yeah. Well, the real-time thing was That was, it was really great. It was so well done, screen. especially yeah. in the first yeah. season. Yeah. And the clock counting down, and yeah. then sometimes when certain people died, the clock didn't count down before you went to commercial yeah. at the end of the show. No, it was really, it was really great. And I will say that... Um, but at the time, anyway, it was new to do mm. it that way. And it wasn't exactly on the page. Stephen Hopkins, who was our regular uh, producer director in that first season, who directed really half of the episodes yeah. of the yeah. first season, including the pilot. A, a lot of that is his input. And so he really set the template for that show, yeah. at, at least for the first season. Um, and it was, I uh, remember when I saw the pilot the first time because you go into these things and you you don't know and it yeah. can be a great experience but the show looks horrible or it can be <laughs> you know a horrible experience and the show looks amazing yeah. you just yeah. can never figure out what it is but I remember watching the pilot they screened it for the crew at lunch one day and said, oh I think that's pretty huh. good yeah. <laughs> that might be, might be yeah. a good show yeah, yeah. yeah. So they had to make a, I remember Jack had changed his shirt at one point and they, they made a point of putting that in yep. like he had to go to his locker change his shirt yeah. and then uh continue on with his day because everything was like the amount of stubble on his face. Right. And That's right. Everything had to be there or there had to be a reason why it wasn't. That's right. It was awesome. That's true. <laughs> they were never, I, I think the first season they were like very much careful with how, very, that's what I mean sense, travel. but they were very careful with how they, they did it. Yeah. And then like towards the end we were like, really, can you get from point A to point B in 20 minutes? Or right. <laughs> is this right. more like a couple of episodes later right. than the arriving? <laughs> now you so know they're doing, helicopter? have you heard? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Full disclosure, my husband is a director, producer, and he oh. left this morning to go shoot that show. No he's, way. He's directing some of those episodes, yeah. That's mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah. So I'll be there and, um, within a week. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll just be an extra in the yeah, just, right, just for you. Like, yeah. it just, like, yeah. And you get all the 24 fans freezing going, No, no, they'll never, I know, they'll never figure it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. What? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have that much hair. Right. <laughs> it keeps growing after you die here. Yeah, there, there you go. It's, you know. But I love now, well, you've done genre, like, almost since the beginning. I mean, you've done Star Trek. You did DS9. Yeah. Uh, the River, of course, stands there hugely because that was just, that was scary television. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. I, I really liked working on The River, I have to say, for lots of reasons. One is I had great bosses on that show. But that genre and the sort of immediacy of all those different cameras mm-hmm. and the fact that the actors picked up the cameras, that was super cool to me. Yeah. And and I, I the way I describe that show now, because, you know, it came and went pretty quickly, but okay. it was such a big swing, like a big try. Mm-hmm. At this point in my life, that's sort of the most interesting th- thing to me. I mean, there's a, a million shows, as we all know, about 
you know, cops and robbers. Oh, totally. Or yeah. Doctors yeah. or yeah. whatever. Um, but that that show in particular, I was really excited to be a part of it. Plus with Bruce, Bruce is an old pal of mine, Bruce Greenwood, and that was really neat. And then we had this cast, as, as you might remember, that was sort of an international cast. Yeah, right. That was really a great. It doesn't, happen, great, a lot of it doesn't happen yeah. like that. Where and everybody was supposed to be where. Well, most of us were supposed to be where we were from. So, we had um, uh, Honduran, Mexican, German, two Brits, yeah. uh, two Canadians, uh, uh, and, and one American. I'm forgetting somebody. I'm sure. Um, my son was a Brit, player, uh, acting as American. But uh, <laughs> it was really, it was yeah. a really neat experience. And if you're going to be, well, literally on a boat. With people yeah. for t- twelve plus hours a yep. day, five days a week. It's nice to have a little variety, right? And, uh, <laughs> and there was room for everybody in that show, so yeah. I really liked that show. Yeah, it was fun. I liked it. I mean, I watched it right to the end. I'm like, yeah, serious? Oh, really? yeah. yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah, that's what how we felt too. Yeah, come on. And and well, like you said, I mean, I'm a huge Bruce Greenwood fan. At Me this point, too. I will watch anything he Me does too. because it's Bruce Greenwood. He's a clinic in yeah. acting. He's so He's good. Just, oh. But I mean, and you've gone well. You've done stuff since then, but then you jumped into like, let's be honest, what's going to be really scary? The Strain with so you have to work with Del Toro. <gasps> can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. I saw a tweet earlier about. I this. did too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like losing, I, you can't use swear words on this. You can one. swear oh, as much as you want. I'm losing my shit. <laughs> 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 I'm so excited to be in his presence. Right? I mean, it's just, oh my gosh. So here he is. Um, I mean, he's Guillermo del Toro, for one. Yeah. And he's this extraordinary sort of artist, creator, sort of force. But he's also so kind and generous and funny and sure-footed. And he just runs this beautiful set. And I'm just thrilled, just thrilled to be with him. I can't tell you. It's so cool. And. I really kind of geeked out when I first met him. I mean, I was just like, oh my god, you're so cool, it's so exciting to be. I'm not cool at all, right? I'm just like, I'm such a big fan. And he was just kind, you know? He didn't say you're a dork, and, or you're fired, or maybe you won't be in the show after all, but it, he's lovely and great, and it's super He's neat. a big nerd, too, though. Yeah, he, I think he is a nerd, but he's he also it. somebody who's who's so, so incredibly, I don't know if he's self-taught or not, but I mean, he reads in three languages. He's always pleased with incredible, like, literary and visual references. And apparently, because I am, I am a bit of a stalker with him. Like, I read everything <laughs> I can find on him. And I, um, there's this great, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, there's a great uh, interview where the, he's in his house. He's got a, an entire house dedicated for his books. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and he talks about in the interview that before he does any project, you know, he goes through his old journals and his books yeah. and he pulls stuff out and he's looking for references. And apparently, if I have this right, uh, some of the, the monster work in um, the vampire stuff in, in The Strain is inspired from drawings he did like 20 years ago. And he's been wow. drawing since he was little, little, since he was five or six. And he, he's just really an incredible, incredible person. And apparently dedicated to working here in Toronto. I love that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he I know. He loves Toronto. So, he's got something yeah. else coming up, I think, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. he's shooting right now. Feature, yeah. Haunted yeah. Peak. Uh, I think it was called Crimson yeah. Peak, now yeah. Haunted Peak, and yes. then maybe goes yeah. back to it. Yeah. yeah just, it's really neat. Yeah. He's <laughs> everywhere. Mm-hmm. He is. He Except showed up at Fan Expo one year. I remember that. Surprise. I have a poster like, signed because he showed yeah. up. Yeah. Me too. And we were pretty much the same. We were like, oh my God. Thank you, Del Toro. Yeah. They were like, don't shake his hand. I'm like, I'm totally shaking his hand. Don't tell uh, me what to do. Because yeah. <laughs> it's Del Toro. Yeah. 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 He's now, super neat. Have you read the books? Yes, I read them all. Yeah. Uh, you read all three? Okay, I've mm-hmm. only read the first one so me far. Me too so far. Yeah. Okay. They're all in my reading. Yeah. It's off the hook. Good. It's really good. <laughs> and, um, I mean, dare I say, I think the TV series is going to be even really? more kind of incredible. Oh. I had my first experience... I guess I'm allowed to say because the books are out, but I had my first experience last week going in for full prosthetics and stuff. To, cool. To <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so neat. And all the monsters were there. So they had all the creations there, like these models, and it was this, this sort of like this massive, huge sort of warehouse space with all these artists, you know, sculpting in clay. And uh, it was on. so That's neat. And all the heads of the different stages yeah. and some stuff that they're trying that maybe isn't going to work or they're going to hold for Ooh. something else. And they're doing the work there, too, in the same room um, on uh, Haunted Peak. Oh, cool. So it was about 20 different artists. They're just creating stuff. It was really oh. neat, though. Yeah. That's wicked. Yeah. That would be the closest cool. I ever get to Weta. 
<laughs> to what? To wet it in New Zealand. Oh, I thought yeah. you said. Yeah. I mean, like to Whoa. wet, like you're gonna wet. Yourself. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Cool. I hope that's as close. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's okay. You know, Maybe I shouldn't talk about us. it anymore. Yeah. Tim, not cool. Because <laughs> yeah, right. okay. yeah, I'm like, if we could just sneak in there at some point and just see that stuff. It's. Sure. It, it was. That's what I felt like. It was yeah. really neat. Because oh, just the, well, watching. I mean, I've like since Hellboy, and well, let's be honest, I go back to the Devil's Back going with yeah. Del Toro, and just watching his designs and his, and like you said, his drawings and his art. I mean. It's, Imagination. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And when he's directing. It's weird because you can always tell when. He has a certain style, a visual style that you can always sort of tell, but at the same time, every single one is unique to itself as well. Mm -hmm. Like Pan's Labyrinth doesn't look anything like Hellboy. (laughs) Well, and he creates this whole world. So, you know, if. I read this other interview on him, and he's talking about (laughs) just many, anything I can find. When you were talking. Yes. um, You know, he he came up doing everything himself. So he's a guy who understands hair and makeup Mm -hmm. and creatures and writing and directing and editing and everything. So. And he puts his hands on all of it, and his worlds are so specific oh, with yeah. rules yeah. and a structure. Yeah. And there's, you know, it's one of those great things when you step into a project, any project like that, where there's a complete world with rules that you can follow, uh-huh. and everything matters, and everything's specific. So the shape of the microphone matters as much as what kind of water you're going to put on the table, <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff he cares about. And it's really great to work with somebody like that. Okay, now, not, well, it's, I'm assuming speaking not only as an actor, but you're a writer-director as well, so yeah. I'm sure you're just... He doesn't know. <laughs> so he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. I mean, why would he know? But uh, on top of stalking him as an actor, I also stalk him as a director, so I'm that sort of creepy person skulking around the monitors like, Hey, GDT, what are you up to? <laughs> What's in your notebook? <laughs> Why do you think Borders? that's a good shot? You know? <laughs> oh, it's just, and, and you know, he's very kind and generous, like I said. So, you know, some directors don't like you up in their business right. or whatever, or they're so kind of insular that there's no room for anybody else. But he's so, I don't know, sort of zen about the whole mm-hmm. thing that nothing sort of phases him, it seems. And so he was, again, very kind to me and let me be creepy around. <laughs> <laughs> now you've, di- you've directed a number of things, including yeah. an episode of Murdoch. Yes, so, yes. Now, after this experience, do you think your directorial style is going to change? or? Uh, or? Well, the, the one thing I got, and, you know, and he just directed the pilot. He's producing mm-hmm. the whole series, but he, he directed the pilot, and so I'm with him for a limited amount of time, right? Of so I'm like doing a feature or anything. But um, what I did, what I really did take away from that so far that I know I took away, was um, <laughs> he has a, a sort of an unwavering focus and he is unapologetic about it's either going to take 28 takes or one. And without wavering, so, you know, in television, 28 takes is yeah, you, you, someone should be fired. Yeah. And he's just, he'll take 28 because that's how many it takes. And then at the same token, he only needs one of something, he's only going to do one of something. Wow. And this sort of, um, you can sometimes get especially someone like me as a newer director, you can kind of get muscled in and out of Mm -hmm. those choices. You know what's right, you know maybe you don't have it, and you know you do, and this weird kind of above pressure like, well, shouldn't you do one more? Or, you've done too many. Um, And he has such a good grasp of his day and such a good uh, you know, sense of what he wants and a Mm -hmm. confidence about how he's going to get it that he just... He's just sort of like, you know, I don't know, he's like he sort of floats around and kind of finds his way through it, and same time, he's just so, um, I guess, unwavering again is the word. So for that, I really uh, was really impressed with that. I will never be able to do what he does, though, which is behind the monitor, monitors, he's got three going at once. He's, it looks like he's starting to rough cut stuff in. Wow. With an editor, I think, down the way. Oh, Plus, man. he's directing. Plus, he's writing and drawing at the same time. And I'll, I'll How never many arms do- does he have? <laughs> <laughs> right? and That's ridiculous. I mean, for me as a director, I mean, it's all I can do to focus on you know the scene right. at hand, what's happening, you know, the house is burning, we got to get to the next scene, all that stuff. But he's just, he's got all pistons firing. Wow. It's really extraordinary watching him. I think he's a genius. Besides yes. being my secret boyfriend, <laughs> he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Which means he doesn't know he's my boyfriend. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe sure now he, he does. does. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We've had Drew. <laughs> Drew's been on it. Drew's been on it. So yeah. So yeah, he'll be on. Secrets out now. Yeah. Toro will be on uh-huh. time now. Now, how did you decide that you wanted to direct at some point? I mean, at what point in your acting career did you say, "Hey, I want to try this acting"? 
Well, the truth is I was always trying to do it. Um, I started when I was, as an actor, the first movie at school, I was 16. Ooh. And shortly thereafter, I, you know, I, I didn't get out of high school, right? So I sort of like <laughs> fled to Montreal and then came very soon thereafter down to L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first job in L.A. was working with John Cassavetes. Yeah. And at the time, I wanted to direct, but I was 18, and I probably looked about 12, you know, at the time. <laughs> so I, I was sort of convinced that nobody would take me seriously in that way anyway, but um, Cassavetes gave me the great gift of allowing me to stay on his crew after I finished acting. So oh, I, I got to work in the camera department, and I boomed a oh, scene, brilliant. and I slept camera boxes, and I just was, he just allowed me to be around him. And around that time, I started, well, I, I wanted to do it myself too, and um, I directed a little short right around then, but frankly, my acting life sort of came undeservedly, but easily. Like, that was a time in Los Angeles where if you looked a certain way, mm -hmm. it was pretty easy to work, yeah. and you know, there was frankly stupid money then for young actors. It's not the same at all now. Um, but it just sort of came to me and I thought, well, maybe that's the way I'll learn how to direct is coming mm -hmm. up as an actor. Um, and then I, d uh, then I decided that what I really needed to do if I was going to act, keep acting, is I needed to learn how to act because I didn't know how. I'd fallen into it. So I started a theater company and we, it was a writer-driven company, so we that's how I was going to figure out how to act was there'd be all these writers in there and um, that turned into another theater company where we did the classics as well as new oh, plays nice. so it was oh, again okay. writer driven but um, and I was running that company with a, my then partner in the company was a guy named Charlie Stratton who's mm -hmm. a wonderful director and has a new movie coming out plug 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 <laughs> <laughs> now called In Secret with Jessica Lange and Elizabeth wow. Olsen and Oscar Isaac and Tom Felton opening oh, a couple of weeks. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh my god. It was wow. here at TIFF and uh, I was coming out mm, probably in like three weeks. Anyway, so Charlie was my partner in the theater company and uh, one of the last shows we did with the theater company was something that I wanted to turn into a movie. Didn't happen. It was one of those, you know, things where the money was there and then mm -hmm. it wasn't. Um, and in fact, in a weird sort of circle, Mark Harmon was going to do it, who's wow. uh, Mark Harmon on NCIS. Yeah. Uh, and I just... Uh, I just sort of kept like going like this, approaching directing and then kind of getting waylaid by some acting gig. <laughs> and when my last movie with Mark Harmon fell apart, I was like, screw it, I, I don't want to do any of this anymore, I'm done. I'm just like, oh, I'm so miserable and you know, having my own pity party. And my manager, Perry, said, just one audition, just got this one audition. I don't want to go to any auditions, I hate it. <laughs> it's just a show, it's called 24, and there's like, you know, I was like, okay. It's a stupid name. It's stupid, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I obviously got that job, and that kind of took me again on another ride of acting. And then I thought, well, that's how I'll come into directing. I'll come in as an actor. Sure. But every show I was on was like canceled within the year. Like I was 24 <laughs> and it was like line of fire. And it was like, we, I never got like past either half a year or a year. So then I said, okay, so now here's my plan, right? I'm just sort of trying to figure it out as I go. So, okay, so I'm going to trade my acting for directing. Um, at the time, Lifetime was doing a, a whole bunch mm -hmm. of movies. And they were hiring actresses like me, but frankly, they didn't care too much about the, about the directors. No offense to any Lifetime directors, but they were just happy to have actors who had TV mm -hmm. stuff. And yeah. So I traded. So my buddy Jason Priestley directed a movie that I acted in him for nothing. <laughs> 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 and um, the, t the swap was that I was then allowed to direct one, and he gave me the favor. He, he did an acting, uh, he did a spot for me in cool. my. Um, so that sort of got me in. At the same time, I directed a documentary in Cambodia, not exactly the same time, but I was stepping in. I was like, I'm just going to do my stuff. So I done a couple shorts. I did this documentary in Cambodia. Um, I did the first couple Lifetime movies, did Murdoch, mm -hmm. and I've just sort of been in that circuit. And uh, I sort of, I, I think in the beginning, I thought I had to choose, but. Frankly, you know, the boys don't choose, right? Like, yeah. no, boys sure never choose. Boys no. take it all. No. So I thought, well, maybe I don't have to choose well, after all. and lead. <laughs> right. Yeah. And this was a sort of, uh, not a realization for me, but a sort of a dawning acceptance. Like, screw it, I'm going to do both. Yeah, do both. Yeah, so I'm doing both. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, good. so I'm not picking. I'm just like, well, we'll see what comes my way. And 
Totally. Um, they both have plenty to yeah. offer, that's for sure, because someone like Guillermo del Toro mm -hmm. is like, I will do anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, go walk by with do a you coffee. Need your pencil, Sean? I mean, exactly. <laughs> do you want me to organize your books for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's an opportunity like that. Right. Obviously, had I walked away from acting, I would never be near mm -hmm. del Toro. And to just have the, you know, the chance to sit and watch something like that work and not just be a visitor to the set or yeah. somebody shadowing, yeah. but like I'm in it with him. And you're involved in yeah. it, yeah. But like I said, no, so he doesn't know he's my secret boyfriend. He doesn't know I'm directing, <laughs> but now it's all out, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the mind oh, rail is yeah. exclusive. <laughs> it blows that happened here that's first, right, That's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now if, would you want to stay like directing in television or would you want to do features or like do another documentary? Well, uh, certainly documentary. Um, TV's an interest, uh, TV movies are an interesting sort of animal, particularly in, let's just say, you know, that sort of women's circuit of Lifetime or Hallmark. Or they're, um, they're formulaic in a way, which is okay, so the rules are pretty clear. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I'm finding that there's a kind of a layer of, uh, there's sort of a ceiling to those movies, right. where you can't stick your head up too high or cut it off. And I've done <laughs> four of them now, uh -huh. and um, my last one, I mean, that was super. I had Ed Asner in the last one, and Mark nice. Post, and Tyler Hilton, and Hillary Burton, and Great. beautiful <laughs> cast, right? We shot in Louisiana, so, and it, the movie did very well, and it was fantastic. And it was a really interesting time there in Louisiana. But at the end of the day, the the parameters are so tight on those movies. Mm -hmm. The budgets are so limited, and um, the expectations are quite high within the budget that it becomes. Um, I sort of feel like now. Not that I'm so fantastic, but I feel like I think I've learned my lessons in that format, right. which are really super great to apply to doing a feature in okay. 14 days or 15 <laughs> days for a million bucks, or you know how to be inventive with scheduling and money mm -hmm. and all that yeah. stuff that I've learned on those those movies. Um, that's a long-winded way of saying that at this point in my life, I would really like to be doing episodic. I like that puzzle and I like how that those shows work. And I'd really like to be doing features, and I've got all different kinds of things that I'm trying to get going. And I love doing documentary. I'm a big travel mm -hmm. hound, so any opportunity to sort of get out of my world. And when I say travel, I mean, I've certainly done a lot of international travel, but I mean just uh, travel out of my mm, bubble, right. Right. wherever that is. Uh, and now, what would be something that would fire your imagination for a documentary? Um, I just came back, uh, well, just now, it was a... Uh, the late spring of last year, I was in um, Chiang Rai in northern Thailand, and there's an incredible, incredible uh, elephant sanctuary there. And I, I'm kind of obsessed with elephants, but they have this. Somebody else was just <laughs> talking. I think the exact same place. Really, elephant nature. Like, can you CP. can you go there and and learn how to? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, there's a bunch of different was ones just there, about this. and they have various levels of sort of being. Um, you know, everything from sort of circus acts where the, the animals are basically sort of tortured into painting pictures for right. you to this place where they're completely free to roam and she's got acres and acres and acres of jungle around. But what I think is so cool is um, she does this, uh, this thing called Jumbo Drop where they go, you can trek with the elephants into the jungle and go assist other elephants who've been maimed or hurt. So it's like a traveling caravan of what? medical assistance. Wow with elephants. <laughs> I think that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I'm also really interested in the mahouts, which are the guys who train the elephants. And this is sort uh -huh. of obviously a dying um, profession. And some of the last guys are left in Burma. And um, it's sort of something you're born into and sort of spend your life doing. And I'm really interested in those guys, uh -huh. too. I mean, you know, it's like they're elephant whisperers. And they're now sort of rethinking how to train elephants, whereas before it used to be breaking yeah. them, literally. Yeah. It's not working that way anymore, particularly at this one place. So I'm interested in that. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. I'm I lost sleep over elephants last night. I want to be an what? elephant whisperer. I lost sleep. I oh, I thought you, you said you had a like sleepover like with an elephant. Yeah, sure. That would have been amazing. <laughs> They're pretty, I have I to say, have really they are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> They're extraordinary creatures. They're just, uh, you just can't believe it. And the thing that I, I mean, th there's lots of things amazing about them, but they they process most of the information apparently comes through 
vibrations in the ground. You'd think it would be yeah, really. what they heard, right? Yeah. Or even what they smell, but it's the vibrations, wow. and they're so they're so light on their feet. So you can be in this big open space and turn around and there's an elephant right there and you haven't heard it come. It's You're amazing. A ninja. <laughs> totally ninja. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So. Oh man. I would watch that documentary. <laughs> I know. Get on that. If yeah, you I think so. If anyone bring you coffee or sharpen your pants. Uh, yes. Cause, yeah. No coffee in the jungle, but yeah, water would water be good. Yeah. Water be good. Yeah. However, if you could get me a coffee in the middle of the night, <laughs> that would be awesome. I picked the beans, I grabbed the beans. <laughs> right. I just totally flash on Kevin Costner now and dance with the wolves with his little... There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh, man, that is cool. And then, yeah, it's, it's funny, though, that you did NCIS because I'm currently working my way through all of... Well, not all of, but all of Donald P. Belisario's stuff at home right now. Where are you at? Where, where are you oh, at? I'm here? way back at the beginning. I'm on Galactica. <laughs> oh, holy cow. Yeah, I'm way back. It's going to take a while to get up to NCIS, but yeah, I'm kind of revisiting all those little tracks of my past. And I'm like, yeah, Belisario, NCIS. And who? Cannell, right? Stephen J. Cannell. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> That's old school. Yeah, well, I, I started this <laughs> blog. I'm like, like, I've got Grace American Hero for you. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was going through the list in my head, I'm like, well, Spielberg obviously influenced me as a kid. Lucas influenced me as a kid. Gene Roddenberry hugely influenced me as a kid. I'm like, yeah. And then I started looking at all these TV shows I should have watched. I'm like, oh, yeah, Stephen J. Cannell. Oh, yeah, Belisario. Okay, apparently these guys have had a huge influence on my life. Yeah. We can't really talk about that. But, yeah, NCIS, my mom swears by NCIS. It's, I, I didn't it's, know. I mean, yeah. Mark's a pal of mine, and I knew that he was on this sort of big TV show, but... It's apparently the number one show in the world. Kind of. Like, in the world. Yeah. And not just locally. Yeah, yeah. And not just, you know, in the States, but yeah. in the world. And it, it's a beautiful show to work on. I mean, it's been on, this is their 11th year. Yeah, yeah. And Mark is just a prince among men to start with. I mean, he is as lovely and charming as you would hope he would be. And after 11 years, he runs that show, as do the producers, but it, it, he's a producer too, but... It's so um, lovely. They have dogs on set. Dogs are allowed to play on set. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like it's when a puppy comes to visit us, we get excited. <laughs> yeah. I get a text. I mean, <laughs> it's so neat. When you know what it does, of course, is like you know. You, sometimes you can get on a TV show and think it's important. It's not so important when you get two dogs. Like it's sort of as the <laughs> great cool. equalizer, yeah. you know. But it's a it's a really great great place to work. That's. I, and this is just me just reveling in honestly how cool I think you are. It's just <laughs> the names there. Yeah, I had dinner with Kiefer. I was at dinner with Kiefer, my my buddy Jason Priestley. I'm like, you are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you who's cool. Jason Priestley's cool. Kiefer's cool. Mark Harmon's cool. Those guys are cool. And of course, you, well, you worked with Kiefer's dad, Donald. I wow. did. Donald's like uber cool. <laughs> <laughs> Donald is. Donald's yeah. too cool for me to be yeah. in the same yeah. room with. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Just. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I kind of too. wish. I've been in the same room with Keeper once at a bar. <laughs> at a bar? It's just. It's he was dancing with a awesome. girl and oh, she was right. really I've drunk. Oh, that's right. I've the story. <laughs> and uh, she Are said you... something like, Dancing with you reminds me of dancing with my dad. And I looked at oh. him and I'm like, Dude, that is not no, dancing. No, that's <laughs> He's like, No. That is not yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this dance is over. <laughs> but that, I love just, just the experiences that you must have had in your life to give you. To open these doors and to, you know. Oh, because I dropped out of high school. That's right. <laughs> Let that be a lesson, kids. Don't stay in school. <laughs> yeah, that's kids. right. To <laughs> flunk out. Yeah. You heard that here. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. All drugs aren't bad. <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. I had to say when, because uh, we were talking about it before, when you when I saw your name come up on an episode of Castle, I geeked out because I was like, is she gonna be in the scene with Sherry <laughs> Palmer, Penny Johnson, Gerald? And no, oh, you're cool. right. I, I, like, oh, no. I think you were even in the station at one point, and she just didn't come out. That's right. I, I think, was I? Yes. I mean, I only did one of those shows. Yeah. Which yeah. Like, yeah. like that, yeah, but no. Yeah, I was waiting the whole, I was like, come on! Yeah. <laughs> 24 reunion yeah, right, right here! No. <laughs> well, here's, here's, um, uh -oh. here's some 24 trivia, which I didn't even know. Uh-oh. Here we go. I'm not going to know. Maybe either. you know this already, but Polly from NCIS... Polly Perrette, the cute okay. girl with the yeah, yeah. dark yeah. hair and the tattoos. She was in 24. Do you remember the episode where 
Season one, you might okay. not. So, okay, season one, amnesia. Okay. I did right. not write that storyline, just, you know, full disclosure here. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of played it well. I got a, a lot of flack as if I wrote that, right? Um, and I, if I remember, which I don't because I had amnesia, but I come to and, uh, and the sort of the stripper waitress girl kind of rescues me and guides me to where I need to go. Blonde. Right. Yeah. That's Polly. Get out That's of town. That's Polly. And she did, the, we, we did this thing when I went out to NCIS because we weren't, we were like, I, but now her hair is totally different and my hair is totally different. And, you know, you just think you know people because they're on TV and stuff. Yeah. And we do this thing and then, and then we tried wow. to put together a good joke. And we, I never do it right about did we work together before? Mm, I don't remember. Huh. <laughs> <Amnesia. laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so there's a little uh, six degrees. Anyway. That's cool. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm actually this close to going back to season one of 24 and just working my way through the series again. Just kind you of got a lot of TV watching to I do. do. If I you're like a, a and like Greatest American Hero, you're going to be like 100. It's going to be a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Although I tend to watch two episodes at a time. So yeah. Yeah. Without okay. commercial, it goes a lot faster. That's true. And, and unlike Sue, I was not there from the beginning of 24. I waited, honestly, until it came out on DVD. And I was working at a video store at the time, so we got to take the stuff home like before it came out. Oh, cool. I literally took home the entire season and watched it in one sitting. You're that guy. 20 hours. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 20 hours. <laughs> wow. And I was like, of course I should have watched it when it aired, but there was no way I could have because I would have killed people. Like, I need to know what happens now. Yeah. I watched it because I love Kiefer. Like I, I yeah. feel like I followed his career forever, and I always just root for him and want him to do well. And I was so excited that he was on this like super cool, unique little show. He was kicking ass, and then I watched so him on good. Touch, and it was like Jack Bauer's getting his ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> he's panting, he's getting all beat up, and I'm like, come on! <laughs> Say damn it! Yes, yeah, right. Say it all right. time. <laughs> But yeah, it was just so, I was so proud of him and, and just like, I wanted to support him so badly and I was thrilled that it was going so well and then, then they killed my Terry and it was me who did it. <sighs> and yet I was still like the hugest fan of the show, like I stuck with it through okay. the whole thing. And I have a strip, my mom. Um, killed off two of my favorite, well killed well, off one by the other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yet That's I still love. It's true. And that was the first time I saw Eric. Oh, no, I was going to say, so my mom came to visit and... Uh, in the first season, of course, <laughs> and um, the, you know, my parents hadn't been, because I lived in LA and they lived in Nova Scotia, it wasn't right. like, they weren't on a lot of sets with me or anything, but this one, <laughs> they were on, and um, and of course here comes, the, the storyline comes up that I'm going to be killed, and my mom's really upset by this, right? She's just like, I can't believe it, I mean, I sat and talked with that keeper, and they're going <laughs> to let you, I mean, she took it very personally, right? And she said, you know, well, uh, that's it. I'm not going to watch season two. I'm not going to do it. I mean, you've been killed off the show, and uh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Cut to, I don't know, where is you know, season two? And my mom's st t starting to talk to me about it. 25 says, Mom, I thought you, uh, <laughs> you were going to do that. Like, you were, you know, because uh, your so daughter's been killed here, off yeah. the show. She said, well, I have to watch for Kiefer. <laughs> <laughs> that nice little Kiefer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is you're not the only one that roots for him, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you had a chance, would you do, like, more episodic television up here? Would you do, like, you've directed a Murdoch, would you be in a Murdoch? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've declared my residency officially <laughs> back in, t uh, in Canada, in Ontario, so I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm still... Picked a hell of a time of year for it. Yeah, <laughs> minus 26 the day I landed. Um, but I love it. In Toronto and I think of it really as my home here I mean I'm from Nova Scotia but I've spent a lot of time here in Toronto so yeah I'm here and I'm trying to find my way here which is how does it work how I mean <laughs> how do you get to a place on the TTC across town this morning I had to go for a meeting from I, we're in Roncesvalles and I had to go from Roncesvalles to is that where you are too <laughs> oh yeah really oh, yeah. you too <laughs> I love it. Th it's, it's great, a right? Gorgeous neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to go from there to Queen and the DVP, okay. and oh. it was what, you know when I left the house at what ten this morning, and it was that sort of that white out kind of yeah. snowstorm, and just to walk down to Queen Street, it took me twenty minutes because I'm like slipping in the snow, and I got my outfit on. I'm supposed to be, and I'm just like sort of drenched with a thing. <laughs> and it didn't have my hat, and my hair was a little wet because I got out of the shower, and it's like gone totally like. <laughs> like Ice head. And I like that one I'm trying to get with my mittens to my token and you know stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out. Um, but yeah, I'm here, and so uh, I'm trying to uh, find what my life is going to be here, which mm -hmm. is to say, 
Directing, certainly, yeah. and acting, I hope. And oh, totally. S- you know, and there's, it's a smaller market here, but there's plenty of American there's, shows. Yeah, that there's come so out much television being shot. Yeah. 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 So, Just yeah, I'm insane. trying. We'll so give you a list of shows we want to see you on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, give them the list of yeah, shows exactly. you want to see me on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We know people. <laughs> Dear <Yeah>. Lost Girl. <laughs> Dear Defiant. Yes. Dear yeah. Yeah. Black. Yeah, without a, you know, do you watch, I mean, you don't have television at home per se, but do you watch, like, anything religiously now? Or are you hooked on, like... Oh, uh, what's the last... Well, the last thing that we watched was um, uh, House Cards. Yes. Oh, good one. Oh. Right? Yeah. yeah. Now, have you seen yeah. the original? No, the I British haven't. The version? I've yet to start it, but I'm looking forward to it. I would like to see that because, I mean, I thought the American version oh my was God. amazing. Yeah. And Corey Stahl, who's also in The Strain, mm. is just so good. I mean, he's really good in The Strain, but I, I'm not I'm not really working with him that my character doesn't interface with him too much. But I've seen everything, of course, in House of Cards, and he was just amazing. Yeah. And the show was great, and and Robin Wright is... Right? Oh, just, oh my gosh, she's so, so happy good. So happy that she won that. Well, she took the Golden Globe this year, right? I think I yes, I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. anyway, so that's what I, that was my latest sort of... Yeah. Um, binge watch Good was reason. that yeah <laughs> and the same like you were talking about 24 like I just just one more just one more just yeah. one more I did yeah. that this weekend with uh, season 2 of American Horror Story which I oh, didn't yeah. watch when it aired but I just kind of chain watched it this week and I'm like yeah alright one more yeah one yeah, more yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> alright let's yeah. see what they do with the act so. yeah. I love that you can do that now with television yeah. because I, I can't know. I can't watch week to week I'm watching True Detective that just started on uh-huh. HBO and it is tough Waiting week to week right now. You're like, come on, it's gonna be a pain when all the back comes back. The good thing was 24 was that we had a like a little club at work <laughs> where you, you were it. really into she it, huh? So, <laughs> well, it was it was one of the, it was like a community. It right. became and then uh, and I was on message boards and stuff. Yeah, especially after that fan phone fiasco. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there was like three or four people at work that we all watched it when it aired, and then we go into work the next morning and talk about it. And we had all these theories because after Nina. There had to be a mall every time. Right. There had to be somebody that wasn't being truthful and stuff. So we were trying to figure everything out ahead of time. We were I never think right. that was one of those, the earlier shows where the, that sort of stuff was happening. It was just, it wasn't that the internet wasn't around, but mm-hmm. that sort of the intersection of the kind of conspiracy theory yeah. and yeah. what was going to happen on a show and could you figure stuff out ahead of time and that whole fan fiction thing. It was thing the and perfect timing. It was amazing. Yeah. And yet, you know, I think... Um, it's uh, people don't remember this as much, but the show was not actually a hit when it came out. Yeah. No, it was sort of stumbling along, and in fact, we were in such rough shape that we were approaching uh, episode thirteen, which was around Christmas time, and they're like, "We don't know if you're going to get picked up for the back nine. Wow! So there's a sort of like little mini finale in the show. I think you know, Kiefer rescues yeah. Kim and I, uh, Alicia. And I, uh, yeah, Kim and I. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Amnesia. Us. Amnesia. Yeah, right. <laughs> Amnesia. Kim Bauer, Alicia Cuthbert. He rescues <laughs> us, and it's like. The sort of show takes up, well, it could possibly end here. Yeah. Because it wasn't doing, it was doing fine, but not great. It was critically very well received. And there was sort of these ardent fans, but but that sort of whole um, internet swell. And then um, the DVD stuff was a big thing yeah. for that show. Yeah. It was one of these sort of binge watching shows where when it re- got released that summer on DVD, oh, then yeah. it just went. Yeah. But when we were doing it, it was kind of great because it, we felt like we were sort of just making the show by ourselves. Nobody was really watching. Yeah, it was kind of cool really, too. Yeah, it was really yeah. neat. Really neat. Because yeah. it's almost like guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah. And yeah. There, were, there was at least two endings filmed for it, wasn't That's there? right. Because there, right. there was one where that. you woke up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, like, it was all a dream. But I was like... <laughs> Well, because the, the chair, and you yeah, still yeah, get back, right. and you spun the chair, yeah, and, and you're like, oh, like, oh, yeah. woke up, and I was like... And I watched it on the DVD, but then I was kind of like, no, it, it, it doesn't needed work. to end the way yeah. it did. It really did. Yeah. And I think, you know, at the time... Um, it seems like it's so long ago, but it, you know, at the time, the idea that your hero Kiefer um, could spend an entire season of a show and then fail yeah. Yeah. hadn't wasn't really happening too much in TV. And not to mention fail by his pregnant wife being shot in the guts, <laughs> like two for one, kill the baby, <laughs> kill the wife by the woman that he had the adulterous affair with. I mean, it was all sorts of boundary pushing at the time for yeah. TV and Fox, by the way. You know, a little slightly more conservative group. Um, so, I I think uh, you know I know. I forgot Ke- about the baby. The baby. <laughs> I 
just shot in the pregnant goats? No, or stabbed? Was I shot or stabbed? Both. You were shot. I was shot. All right, so, um, so there was a big sort of kerfuffle about, like, is this the right thing to do or not? Is, are the fans going to turn? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Kiefer, rightly so, sort of posed the question, like, does that make me a loser? You know, within the context of sort of, you know, the archetype of TV show. And anyway. Um, it makes you a flawed hero, and people love that. Right. <laughs> and it was, of course, the, not only was it sort of, it was clearly, when you line them side by side, there's no question it's the yeah. better way to yeah. go. Um, but at the time, there was a lot of discussion. I'll tell you that I didn't know what was going to happen. We shot both, but it was super top secret. And I literally didn't know until the day before it aired, the day before, um, because I had to go loop, I had to go do ADR and like do my lines. It's like, oh, guess I'm dead. And that's, therefore, <laughs> got it. Huh. I'm going to have dinner with Keith for tomorrow. <laughs> Everything will be this. fine. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, single tear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that had to be rough. <laughs> well, it was a great job, right? I was sorry to, yeah. I mean, it was clearly the yeah. right way to oh, end totally. that. And yeah. I didn't dispute that at all. And I'd had a great experience on the show. Totally. And, um, I, I, for, so that was all great, it, but it was it was sad for me personally to leave it because yeah. I liked so much working with those people, oh, that yeah. crew, and obviously that cast was great. Well, as a director, though, you could start saying, "Hey, I want to work with you. Let's find time for you." Well, I'll it. tell you that certainly Stephen Hopkins, in particular, was also a clinic in directing. I mean, how he shaped that show and how he ran that show, and we were. Again, we weren't that successful at the time, so there was not a lot of money, and the days were pretty tight, and it was yeah. a bit of running and gunning. You know, that was the style of the show too. But it was a great sort of, um, you know, intersection of all the right things I think that made that show work. Totally. Now, did you keep anything from the set or any sets? <laughs> Your outfit that you wore for the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing about those pants is they had stretch in them, <laughs> so you could like you know have lunch or have you know a kind of week or whatever. Um, uh, <laughs> remember that very well, like right. And I liked it actually because I don't really like going to wardrobe and doing all that stuff. Yeah. It's like same thing every day, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I think if I kept anything, um, <laughs> I don't think I kept anything from twenty four. Although I do have a key for action ball. Do you? I At that party I was telling you about where it was like, oh my gosh, the show was really big. There's lots of people here watching and there's like press and stuff. They had a sort of, here's another thing I'm going to you know, totally divulge, but they had as decoration <laughs> these like key for action figures. I took one. <laughs> That's took awesome. One. <laughs> Put it in my purse. We're blowing everything <laughs> wide open here tonight. <laughs> oh, and I don't yeah. even feel bad about it. <laughs> no. Well, why would you? He's like, that's my face up there in one of those clips. I'm going to just take that doll and put that first. I died for this character. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was the driving force behind everything that happened after that, as far as he was concerned. That's fantastic. Although, I'll be honest, I'm so looking forward to your work in The Strain. I just can't wait to see it's, everything that happens. R- it's really neat what they're doing on that show. Yeah. It's, it's see, really, really neat. It runs and it runs and it runs and you direct. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. Just Mm-hmm. She can direct. <laughs> <laughs> there I think it'll be awesome. Have you seen the mm-hmm. teaser trailer for it? I did. The, which one? The, the he is here, the the eclipse, and the, the yes. dark, and then yeah. yeah, I just saw that actually yesterday. And apparently, um, at the the TCAs a couple of weeks ago, they showed a trailer trailer for the show, oh. which I haven't seen. Yet. I've been just trying to find it <laughs> on the Google machine, and I can't find it. Um, but there's also this funny one. This rats one? The rats yeah. one at the restaurant. But that yeah. confused me the yeah. first time me I saw too. it. Me too. And here's what I don't get. Like, uh, you, you read the first oh, book, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, the rats are supposed to be leaving. Yeah. Not going. Yeah. I didn't get... Well, yeah. I was oh. like, that's just kind of weird, but... Yeah. Bring oh, on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was so, like, oh, the teaser trailer's out, so let me go find that, it. And that's how I came on the rats one. And yeah. I'm like, what? That doesn't even look like an official trailer. It's like a clip. And I like. I think the idea is right. I've watched the people who are creating all that are gonna yeah. go see ya. <laughs> yeah. um, but I didn't get. I didn't get that, and it's not the style of the show or anything either. Yeah. And I thought, okay, so they're trying to sort of set this whole campaign like yeah. real. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Except the rats are going the wrong way. They need yeah. to be coming out. Unless we're just having the wrong are impression or something. But I don't. I don't think I watched it a couple of times. Ago, <laughs> either way, it's, it's right. gonna be awesome. Yeah. 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 Side by side. It is. And, and it was still, because like, it, it actually still worked for Creep Factor having it. Oh, like, really? oh people just like, yeah. oh my, because like, they're having like a little chat. Yes, yeah. and then there's like, and then like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Rats. 
Now, is there a date set for the first episode? Then? I think one. July, because there's so many <laughs> visual July. effects. I know. Oh, I know. Defiance will be half over by then. <laughs> Which actually kind of works. I so. think. We're only on episode uh, four. Right now, I don't think we really Four, do need to start out of whining 13. and complaining about said visits. Uh, <laughs> I'll email them again. Yes, Del Toro will be so good. I promise. <laughs> we know two of the cast members now, at least. At least. I sh- I'll try to hook you up. <laughs> there Let's we go. It's on. <laughs> Keely got that recorded, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I just, Leslie, thank you. For coming in because this has been Thank amazing. You for this has me. been a highlight and a hell of a way to start our first episode of the new year. Yeah. Because, Who's coming next? Who's your next uh, person? Our friend Jeremy, Jeremy Lalonde is coming back to talk about Sex his after film, kids. Sex After Kids. Oh, cool. Which and has our good friend Katie Bowen in it. Yes. And you should work with him as well. And yeah. He's a fun and lad. we might have a young actress from South Africa later this week. We're not sure. Good for you guys. And so, how are you doing this? Like, you just gone, hey, Ringling, want to be on the show? It's it's amazing how <laughs> yeah. easy social media is to get in touch with people yeah. now. Right. I mean, right. it's. Uh, I mean, I've told this We've story tons of half a dozen over times, but yeah, Twitter works amazingly. Facebook, and because we know people now within the industry, right? People go, oh, yeah, have you heard of these people? And, and they're like, yeah, yeah. And we just, it just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, that's good for you guys. And then I joined IMDb Pro because that way I could get in touch with. Yeah. I could do things right. a little uh, You can go officially yeah. through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ryan Goldhart, our producer, also works at Characters Talent Agency, yeah. so he knows people, and he says, yeah. oh, he can kind of point us in the right direction, yeah. so we don't we don't approach people the wrong way, because you don't want to burn any bridges. You, you want to build the bridges. So, so far, we have the burning candle I can't candle remember. There was, house. like, one talent agency. <laughs> I was Hasn't like, do you know anybody months? at Laugh? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, I, I'm good friends with everybody over there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, these are the people I want. <laughs> so it's really well. But yeah, Leslie, it's it's been amazing because, well, Sue, of course, has been a fan since 24. I've just been, i followed you on 24. I love you in the river. Thank and you. can't wait to see what you do in the strain. And of Thank course, you. once I hit NCIS, I'll be like, Leslie, I'm watching this episode now. And I'm so like, just, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like every Twitter yeah. hit. Leslie, you just said this. Did you see? I tweeted you back. I'm just figuring I, out how to tweet, really. I and that. I was on the TTC. I was like, oh, wait, that's about me. I'm not <laughs> Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Do I retweet? Am I favorite? I what am I doing? Yet. I'm trying to answer you. <laughs> hey, I'm outside. Freezing my butt off. <laughs> Are you very cold? Yeah. But yes, Leslie, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Sue. Yeah. That Thanks for me. having me. <laughs> After having all those nerves and excitement building, I think it totally paid off on this one. Because I wouldn't Three hours at sleep. all. <laughs> Not at all. Not true. Kaylee, thanks for working behind the uh, behind the camera as always thanks, with your Kaylee. with your mentor. Yeah. <laughs> mentee. 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 And uh, and for Smitty TV and the Mind Reels, I'm Not Tim. Manatee. That's still Sue. And we're gonna see you next time real soon. Bye bye. <laughs> Like in two days. <laughs> that was so awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks oh, my me. God, that was so much fun. Um, Thank you so much. The Twitter thing just reminded me of Meg Tilly because she was the same way. She's <laughs> like, I don't know. People follow me. Do I follow them back? I don't know what to yeah, do. about all the rules. And I don't, here's what I don't, maybe you guys can tell me. So, you know when you do the, the number sign? Yep, the hashtag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, do you do that just to sort of like identify a kind of a link? Like, it's I to don't like, like get how it works. I, I, I like to identify like a tag a trend for a trend, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I.